President, we now move on to the last follow-up, which will be asked by EFF, Honorable Chiram Pungose. In a population of above 60 million, 30 million in South Africa live in poverty, 18.2 million in extreme poverty. 13.8 million are experiencing food poverty, literal hunger and starvation. Mr. President, there were lesser people living in poverty before you became president. There were lesser people unemployed, lesser violence against women and children, lesser murders, lesser femicide. Millions of our children under your presidency experience multidimensional poverty, where they are deprived of health care, housing, nutrition, information, water, and sanitation. These harrowing statistics have never dropped since you became president. Instead, they continue to rise under your presidency. Poverty has worsened in South Africa since you became president of South Africa. Whose poverty are you referring to to be prioritizing since 2018 when it's not reflected statistically and in the lives of women and children who are at the bottom of the food chain and whose conditions have worsened since your inauguration in 2018 to date? Thank you. Honorable President, again, I've not had any question that has been asked. However, if you so wish, you may respond to the statement, whether is it of intent or what, I don't know. <laughs> but you are at liberty to respond to it. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I've listened to the Honorable Member a few times. And one thing that she's really good at is having a statistically driven mind. She's very good in regurgitating statistics, and with the greatest of respect, I should say some of the statistics that you put forward are a bit skew and flawed. But with great respect, I say, I did not hear any question being put forward. I just had... Speaker, point of order, please. I mean, Chairperson. Honourable Member, you have re re risen on the point of order. We have afforded you an opportunity to ask a follow-up question, of which you made that statement and according Accordingly, afford the president to address you on the issue that you have raised. Over to you, honorable president. You may respond to the statement that has been made before the house. Honorable chairperson, uh, it's a pity that honorable member did not allow me to continue because much as she did not really put a question forward, what I was going to favor her with is precisely a response to the comment that she made. Because she asks, or she seems to ask, which poverty am I referring to? And of course, we have always said that, as Honorable Member said earlier, that yes, we face a triple challenge in our country, and we've never shied away from that. We've never shied away from saying there is rife poverty in our country, there is inequality, and indeed there is unemployment. These are the challenges that our country faces, and these are the challenges that the Government of National Unity is determined to address. As we entered into the seventh administration, and as all the ten parties committed themselves to a program of action, we are aiming and we are determined to ensure that, yes, we reduce incidence of poverty in our country, the poverty, yes, that affects millions of South Africans, unemployment, 
that affects millions of South Africans and to reduce uh, inequality in our country. This is what we have committed to doing. And so if you care to know and to listen, the government of national unity is committed to doing precisely that. And the vigor and the commitment that we are underpinning our work with is such that as we grow our economy, as we embark on more and more developmental initiatives, we will be able to reduce unemployment and create more jobs. And through that, we are certain, I'm certain, that we'll be able to reduce poverty as well and in the end address the challenge of inequality. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable President. Honorable President, we now come to question number four, which is asked by Honorable Makesini from EFF. Over to you, President. Honorable Chairperson, the policy direction of the Government of National Unity was outlined in the opening of Parliament address that I made on the 18th of July 2024. The key constitutive ideas of the Government of National Unity are set out in the Statement of Intent, as I've said, which was signed by all the constitutive parties to the Government of National Unity. So those parties agreed to certain basic principles, including a firm commitment to respect the Constitution and the rule of law. The principles included a commitment to promote accountability, transparency, integrity, and good governance. The parties also agreed to a minimum program as the foundation of the work of the GNU. These were developed into priority actions that will form the basis for the medium-term development plan of our government and the seventh administration. As indicated in the opening of Parliament address, the Government of National Unity will dedicate the next five years to actions and interventions that advance three strategic priorities. Firstly, to drive inclusive growth and job creation. Secondly, to reduce poverty and to tackle the high cost of living. And thirdly, to build a capable, ethical and developmental state. We will pursue growth that is inclusive and transformative. We have said that inclusive growth must support the empowerment of black South Africans and women. We will continue to pursue programs that encourage broad-based black economic empowerment, employment equity, and support to small and medium-sized enterprises. We will continue to protect and uphold the hard-won rights of workers and continuously strive to improve the conditions in which they live and they work. In advancing our three strategic priorities, we will, amongst other things, massively increase the scale of investment in infrastructure, as I said earlier. We will expand the presidential employment stimulus and as part of poverty alleviation measures, we will ensure that local government implements the indigent policy. We will review existing housing policies to enable people to live closer to economic opportunities. Importantly, we will invest in the people of South Africa. This includes efforts to achieve universal access to early childhood development, it includes the expansion of vocational and technical training in schools as well as post-school institutions. As part of the implementation of the NHI, as I said, we will strengthen our healthcare system. To improve the capability of the state, we will work with provincial governments to stabilize local government and improve service delivery processes. We are strengthening law enforcement agencies to address crime as well as corruption. We recognize that the GNU is comprised of parties from across the political spectrum, 
representing a range of political and ideological perspectives. However, we have been able to agree on a common program of action that provides a basis for far-reaching social and economic transformation. This is what we have committed ourselves to, and this is what we are determined to execute, to improve the lives of South Africans with clear determination and an action-oriented approach to doing what is needed to ensure that South Africans get a better life. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable President. There is, however, a follow-up question from Honorable Makesini. Over to you, Honorable Member. Manbulele Emongameli. Helen Zile commented that the government that you lead, in essence, is a coalition between yourself and the Democratic Alliance. She also called that it will be each year new to appease Abantu be Patiako, Abanga Kolanga, Galento Osbafake Uyo. Then what you will never embark to any program of action without more na beyond a democratic alliance. Based on those things, the 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 opposition uba into any regardless we executive a decision is in majority. Ukuti redressa the apartheid and the colonial legacy and to make her sure Ukuti no government. Uyakwazu buisa umshaba kubantu ni akwazi ukuti lange unemployment so that the challenges in our country si beka kwano bahala diabulela. Thank you very much, honourable member, honourable president. Thank you, honourable chairperson. I must say that as the honourable member seeks to characterize the government of national unity as a government between myself and the DA, uh, that is a completely wrong characterization. It is not a government that revolves around the president and another political party. It's a government of national unity of 10 political parties that are involved in a government of national unity we have determined, as I said earlier in my main reply, to work together as a government of national unity. How anyone, including the person that you referred to, seeks to describe it is just really a matter of polemics. It's just somebody who is whistling out there uh, in the wind and uh, trying to paint a particular color to what we are seeking to do. Those that are involved in a government of national unity know, and this was also confirmed last night when I met all the parties, we engage with each other with respect, with recognition, and with acceptance of the role that each of the parties play. United in the project of improving the lives of South Africans. And so therefore, those who have this notion that it is only myself and the other party, or uh, two parties, are completely wrong. And that is a complete wrong reading of the current situation. And may I say even a reading of the, where this country seeks uh, to be going. We are moving forward as a united government made up of 10 political parties that have agreed that we are going to address the challenges that face the people of South Africa working together. The people of South Africa did 
determined and decided that we should work together. And that was the mandate they have given us all to say work together to advance our interests. And that is precisely what we are doing. I said that we are underpinning everything that we are doing through the statement of intent, which is very clear in terms of what we need to achieve. And we know that having set out a very clear program of action, we will execute that together. Now, I appointed a cabinet that is made up of the various parties. Some are represented in parliament, and many of them are represented in the executive. And I'd like to give you a front row seat to see precisely how that is working out. It is working out so well that everyone who's been appointed in various positions are showing a great deal of commitment not to work for themselves, not to work for their own parties, but to work for the people of South Africa. And that is the strength of what we are seeking to do. And this is the government that I lead, and I lead it in the interests of the people of South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable President.